Hi everyone, back with you again. Um, this time we've got another craft for you, and it's going to be um, a whistle made of antler. Now, I've really, really struggled with uh, with whistles. I only, I think, I made my first one a couple of weeks ago uh, when my friend Reem showed me how to make it. Uh, I tried it for the first time, didn't work out as well. So I'm trying to, I've been trying to research and research as much as I can to uh, find out what was going wrong. Uh, but I tried another one um, today just with wood because I didn't want to mess up my antler um, and just playing around with it what I found was so the originally I wasn't getting the right pitch I wasn't getting it high enough it wasn't loud at all and I really had to blow hard to it uh, to get anything to thin out part of that was having the right read so this time Instead of um, whittling one down from a piece of wood, I've gone for, for some doweling, a uh, different size doweling, uh, so that it's a perfect round shape, so I can work with the, the those a lot better. Uh, so that was the first part. And then it's just a case of uh, finding how far back to drill my hole. I, n I never knew how far to go in. Did it affect the, the pitch? Did it affect... So if I just drilled in uh, this far, did it have a sharper sound than if I drilled down and my hole went halfway down the whistle and the answer is no it doesn't I, well it does in some way it depends where you put your hole so I the first time I made this whistle um, I've made my incision here and my hole that I drilled in finished just where the end of this hole is so it was literally it went straight down from there inside and it didn't produce any sound I drilled down a bit deeper from there so I drilled down a bit more and that produced a high-pitched sound and I drilled down deeper even further and now it's got quite a it gets it's a lower tone okay so it doesn't matter how long this length is before you get to your the hole that your air is escaping from okay but from this point the further you head back with your hole, the deeper the sounds get. So if you want a really maybe low train whistle, then you would probably drill down a lot further down your piece of wood. But it all depends on where this where this hole is. Um, now some there were some videos that I watched where they said from your mouthpiece, uh, your hole here should be about an inch back. Um, so that yeah, that's absolutely fine. Um, but none of them said how far you should go in with your uh, with your drill from where your um, mouthpiece is. Uh, I found that everybody's correct with saying how far your reed needs to go in. Um, so if you can see, I read inside there. Okay, I line it up with where that hole begins and that gave me the best sound. Um, the sound isn't great right now because I have made it deep and I've messed around with it. But before I messed around with it, it did have a very sharp sound because it was quite smooth inside uh, and I was happy with it. So the plan is, uh, because I've got the dowel to how I want it to be, uh, there's a nice gentle slope uh, going up the top of it because they said you should start off, it should be thinner here than it is at this end uh, because then it forces the air when it's traveling along it forces the air to move upwards and into the hole that you've moved uh, you, you've, you've made uh, so i'm happy with that i'm going to use the same drill bit on my antler um and again i'm just gonna have a play around it i'm gonna see if it works um i'll be quite sad if it does mess up my antler but i'm sure i can make something else with it it's not the end of the world um so i'll get drilling into the antler and we'll see where we go from there Okay, now I've got that drilled out. I'm just going to measure how deep it is. Right. I think that's about that's about right because that's just where it starts to uh, to curve down. If I started to go any further, it would break through. So I'm happy with that. So now it all depends on where I'm going to put my hole uh, because I don't have the ability to go deeper like I did on the wood if I need to. So, I think if I go about halfway, I'm thinking halfway there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go for halfway, so I'm, I'm going to use my knife. I'm just going to mark that out. Okay. 
Okay, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this goes. seen some people use a Dremel tool, I don't have a Dremel, um, so I think the file is going to be the best bet on that. I'm going to get my first cut down there though. Hmm. Right, never mind the knife, never mind the Dremel, never mind the file, I don't need them. I've got the next best thing, in fact it's not the next best thing, it is the best thing. I can't believe I forgot I'd, I had this. You ready to see it? Ha ha! Look at it! Look at it! Look at the beautiful thing! I've had this for about a year and it's never been out of its box. I use this all the time. When I first got it I took the uh, sanding disc out and I just use it for basic sanding. I always, I always said, oh, I need to get the belt sander out, I need to get the belt sander out, I need to have a go at it, never been used before. And I remembered where, where I remembered that I had it, and this is going to be perfect. Right, so I managed to get through. Uh, I'm just going to neaten it up now, and then uh, we'll get the dowel, and we'll see see what we're working with. Right, okay. So been able to uh, just make sure everything's okay. Make sure there's no no bits still inside. Um, I've sanded. I love this belt sander. Now I'm going to be using it for everything. Um, I've, I've sanded the. the read down a bit more uh, it just needed a different angle uh, for for this whistle uh, which which is absolutely fine um, and so we'll, we'll try it in uh, which side was it that side so again I'm just gonna take it to the side and let's see how it goes play some play around with it a bit more So you will have to play around um, with it a bit just to get the right right pitch. Um, so you can see when I first put it in, there was the whistle, but it wasn't wasn't as loud as that last one. It's a it's a really nice nice tone to it. So next bit with this now is um, it's not as tight as a fit um, as the as the antler. Uh, sorry, as the when I made the ferro rod. Uh, antler where I didn't need to put any glue in it. I will need some glue in this or this is just going to move about too much. So uh, I'm going to pop some glue in um, and then leave it to dry. When it's dry I'll cut the end of it um, off because when I glue it I'm going to have to take it out, glue it in. Uh, if I cut it off beforehand then I'm not going to be able to adjust it as much as I'll need to because I won't be able to get the right placement. Um, but just you can see how far that's going in. Again, it's just in line with where that cut is. There. You can see it inside. Okay. And again, uh, it's just got that, it's just got a slope up, only ever so slightly sloped up uh, to, the, to the exit hole there. So we'll get it glued in. So, um, so all you need to do when you put, when you're gluing it in, just make sure uh, you only glue the underside, so the round, the rounded bit. Um, don't glue the flat bit. Obviously, it's got nothing to stick to, uh, but also it can affect the sound if there's anything on there. That's why if you're making these out of wood, um, any of these like little hairs, they can all affect the uh, 
the, the pitch and the sound of the whistle when it comes out. So uh, that's one of the reasons why it's best using antler, is you don't get many bits like that. Uh, but yeah, so glue at the bottom, uh, adjust it again, make sure it's all working fine. Uh, leave it to dry and then we'll get this cut off as gently as we can. Um, and then we'll get it sanded down. So as you can see, I've uh, I waited for the glue to dry, uh, so that when I started to um, saw the doweling off, it didn't start moving around. And you just need to keep on uh, testing it. Um, you make a cut, you test it. You make a cut, you test it. You make a cut, test it, and so on and so on. Uh, because as soon as it moves, if you keep on testing it, you'll be able to put it back in position um, because you've still got some dowel sticking out. Because once it's like this, especially once you put glue in, um, I don't think there's anything you can do to uh, to move that about. So you need to make sure that you put it in the right spot before you completely cut it off. Um, and I've uh, put it on a belt sander so it's nice and flush. Uh, might put some oil on it just to, to carve it around. Some people do use antler uh, inside out as the reed um, so that there's not that, there's, so there's no contrast so it just looks like one piece. But uh, for my first go at using that antler, I needed a, a, a reed that I knew was going to be the right diameter. So using Dowlin, better safe than sorry. Uh, I can move on to using antler as a reed in the in the future. But I'm I'm happy with it. I I, I don't I'm happy with how it looks. Uh, I'll put some oil on it uh, just to bring out the grain a bit more. Uh, I, I'll clean up clean up any any green marks on it. But I, I'm happy with it. I think the next part um, is the same as what I need to do on my ferro rod so while I was waiting for it to dry I've just sanded down these edges as well like I said in my uh, in my previous video uh, it was just a bit too sharp on, on the fingers uh, and on the knuckles so I've just lightly sanded it down uh, just so it's nice and smooth so the next job to do on both of these is to uh, drill a hole into the bottom of them uh, I've got some uh, leather somewhere is it falling off? Wind's probably blowing it about. I've got some uh, leather uh, thong um, that I'm going to put round to make a bit of a, not necessarily a handle, just a, a, a holder for it. Um, just a bit of decoration. I've got some smaller pieces of antler that I can use as toggles as well. Uh, but it's just something to, to, to hang them off, really. So um, I think I'm going to leave uh, the video there, uh, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if there is, if, it, well, if you have any, any questions about um, any of the steps or if you have any tips of what I could have done differently, I'd love to, I'd love to hear them, I'm not an expert by, uh, by any means. Um, so if you've made one, you may have done it a different way, um, just let me know in the comment section below. Um, if you liked the video then give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing um, and yeah I've, I've, I've loved being able to show you what I've been making, um, see you next time.